It's Monday, January 15, and time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good morning. A move by the United Progressive Party to woo independent Christchurch West MP Dr. Maria Agard to its ranks could be a big plus for the new political party, so says political scientist Peter Wickham. Last week, UPP leader Lynette Eastman told reporters that Dr. Agard would in fact be a boost for her party and she will do everything to ensure that the former Barbados Labour Party member continues her political career. Wickham tells Barbados today if Dr. Agard made the move, it would give the new party a stronger footing on the political landscape. Uh, the move is a coup for the UPP, however, as she, it can now lay claim to parliamentary representation uh, and possibly a share of the budgetary support mm -hmm. that Parliament gives to parliamentary parties. Uh, success in the 2018 election for both her and the UPP is another matter, however, and I'm a lot less optimistic about that. But at least for now, the UPP can claim a, a coup. The political scientist, however, suggested that the UPP has more to gain than Dr. Agard. He's not convinced that she will retain the seat in the upcoming election, but suggests she may have little choice but to side with the UPP if she intends to continue in politics. Uh, I think it's logical for her if she wants to continue in politics, as the doors to both parties are now closed and her success as an independent is even less likely than her competing as a UPP member. I would hasten to stress that I think her chances of success in that constituency are little to none. But yeah, I would hasten to stress that I think her chances of success in that constituency are little to none. But she has boxed herself into that position by virtue of her past associations, and now this is her only option. In other news, short-term measures have been implemented to tackle the South Coast sewage crisis. So says Health Minister John Boyce, who is also urging the public not to panic. In an update on the situation, he said the Barbados Water Authority is getting ready to install CCTV cameras to detect the conditions of the sewers and to identify the area of greatest damage. In the meantime, he says there is no need for alarm about the quality of a tap water or potable water and the near shore water on the island. We are not saying nay to any of the experiences which Barbadians or visitors to Barbados may have shared. But I am, I feel duty bound to bring that level of assurance to the Barbadian public that these situations are monitored. The potable water in Barbados has been monitored and there is no cause for alarm in terms of that quality measurement is done by the Barbados Water Authority. And when we find it necessary, we will add our weight to the, uh, that investigation. The north, near shore beach water in Barbados is investigated by the coastal unit. And for November and December, there have been no movements, no increases in terms of the, in, no changes then. The water quality on our beaches is safe, therefore, as far as those reports are concerned. But the opposition Barbados Labour Party candidate for Christchurch West, Dr. William Duggid, is not taking the minister's word. In fact, he suggests the government's failed handling of the situation has put Barbadians at severe risk. It is up to the government to do their job. Their salaries are nothing more than cost overruns because they haven't been doing their job. If they were doing their job, we would not be in this situation now. And you know what? You know what? It's sad. Because this stuff only affects people's lives. This affects the economy. This affects tourism. This effect affects health. You heard my colleague talk about the problems that you get when you're exposed to switch. Gastroenteritis. Hepatitis A, he didn't mention. Significant problems with estrogen coli, diarrhea and vomiting, dehydration. Are we going to wait till we have a death? Over in St. George, residents are getting ready to up the pressure over the lower estate dump site. During a committee meeting held last night, residents made it clear that they may go as far as seeking legal redress. But they were adamant it was not about financial compensation, but relief from the stench 
emanating from the dump operated by Anderson Sherry. Opposition MP for St. George North, Glenn Clark, who is a leading member of the committee, told Bobby that today residents are prepared to take drastic action to get the plight addressed. We will meet to, with the residents. We will continue to observe what is happening at, at Low Estate. We will not we will not sit by idly and allow this to happen again. Right? So we are meeting with the residents. We will continue to observe what is happening here and we will um, meet with the way the um, Barbados, the, the community within this area to get some re resolution to this matter. We continue to meet with the meet with the, the operator, Mr. Sherry. We want to meet with him. We want to find out what he has done so far. We want to meet with um, the Ministry of Health and so on. But the residents are saying that if they do not have closure to this problem, then they are willing to step up their protest. Attorney General and Home Affairs Minister Adriel Brafwit has made it clear that the legalization of certain illegal drugs is not an issue that should be taken lightly, pointing to the increasing number of young men and women getting treatment for substance abuse. He said the issue is one that must be carefully analyzed and addressed. The minister made the comments as he addressed the National Council for Substance Abuse Church Service at the Black Rock Wesleyan Holiness Church yesterday to launch Drug Awareness Month. We're concerned about the number of young men that we're seeing at Burden House. We're concerned about the number of young women that we're seeing at Marina House, also in, in, in St. John. We're concerned about the number of young men and women, young men in particular, that we're seeing at the QEH because of the abuse of, of substances. And of course, we're concerned about the large number of young men in particular that we're seeing at the psychiatric hospital. So to those of you in society who are on this bandwagon that we should automatically legalize certain substances, I say to you, I invite you to see the other side of the coin first and foremost, to see the tremendous amount of damage that's being done to our young men and women in this society. And once you see that, then your views may very well change to recognize that, that in fact, is that's not so much about legalizing any substance, but to ensure that whatever we do, that we accept the serious public health consequences, the potential damage that can be bestowed, that we can on unsuspecting young boys and young girls. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. News from our regional neighbors now. The opposition St. Lucia Labour Party defends its decision to boycott last Friday's swearing-in ceremony for Governor General Sir Neville Snack. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierre claims the new head of state does not have the full confidence of the population. However, during the ceremony, the island's sixth governor general said he was there to serve the interests of both sides. During my inauguration as president of the Senate in 1993, I gave this assurance to the Senate, which some may still recall. I am not less the president of the opposition for being appointed by the government. This was meant to show that there was a certain sacrosanctity inherent in certain offices that demanded unwavering impartiality. That same sentiment I repeat here today and say, I am not less 
the Governor General of the Opposition for being appointed by the government. For a Governor General is a symbol of unity to bind us together as one. This for me is the stamp and hallmark of our, our true parliamentary democracy. Finally on the international scene, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake of Peru's southern western Pacific coast resulted in the death of at least one person. Some 65 people were also reportedly injured as buildings in mainly rural areas collapsed. The country's president said rescue teams were on their way to verify the extent of the damage, but blocked roads were slowing down aid. We get more in this report. New video shows people standing on higher ground away from buildings for safety. Photos show others sifting through the rubble. 57 people are injured. Officials say there is no longer a tsunami threat. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.parbitistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and glass stations near you. And don't forget Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good morning.